Live from Bryant Denny Stadium with special guests, feature stories, and a comprehensive look at Alabama's upcoming game. This is Crimson Tide Kickoff on WVUA 23. And good morning, everybody, and happy game day. I'm Gary Harris coming to you from our WVUA 23 studios inside Bryant-Denny Stadium, and you're watching Crimson Tide Kickoff. We're going to get you ready for tonight's CBS primetime matchup between top-ranked Alabama and Texas A&M at Kyle Field in College Station. Let's go, as always, with our Bama headlines. For the latest on the Crimson Tide, you don't need the newspaper. You need Bama headlines. Well, let's go ahead and remove the elephant in the room. In the preseason, this game had all kinds of hype surrounding it, but since the beginning of the season, the hype has diminished. Not because of Alabama. The Crimson Tide's doing everything it's supposed to do. 2-0 in the SEC, 5-0 overall, and ranked number one. But Texas A&M 0-2 in the conference, and the Crimson Tide now We'll go into Kyle Field tonight as an 18-point favorite. And Alabama has won eight straight in the series against the Aggies. You have to go back to the 2012 Johnny Manziel game to find the last time A&M knocked off Alabama. Well, yesterday, the Crimson Tide moved into the number one recruiting spot for the 2022 class. Alabama's used to that. After the commitment of 6'5", 210-pound tight end Jalil Skinner, the uh, tight end has played his, or playing his senior season at IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. He's from South Carolina. The Crimson Tide landed Skinner over programs like Miami, Texas, Florida, and others. Alabama basketball is ready to tip off the season with a pair of big events in Tuscaloosa, and the Bryant Museum has a new executive director. Those stories are coming up. Plus, interviews with new Alabama men's golf head coach Jay Sewell, well, he's not new, that's for sure. But the longtime Alabama men's golf head coach, J.C. Will, former Texas Longhorn offensive tackle and NFL first-round draft pick Blake Brockemeyer, he'll talk about the success Alabama has had signing recruits away from Texas and A&M. Plus, we'll talk with Brent Zerneman of the Houston Chronicle for some intel on the Aggies in our Behind Enemy Lines segment. Well, this was the scene outside the Malmore Athletic Complex on Friday afternoon. Alabama football getting on the buses for the trip to the airport and then the flight to A&M. DJ Dell, Henry Toa Toa, and Will Reichard getting on the bus. There's big Will Anderson Jr. and Malachi Moore. They're ready to go. Alabama always dressed for a business trip. Tight end Cameron Latu, offensive tackle Evan Neal, quarterback Bryce Young, just as cool as the other side of the pillow. And then the man, Nick Saban, when you see him and Director of Football Operations, Ellis Ponder, you better be on that bus and ready to go because when coach gets on, the door closes and the buses roll out to the airport. Well, earlier this week, Alabama head coach Nick Saban confirmed news that fans had suspected running back Jace McClellan out for the rest of the season with a knee injury. McClellan had his surgery on Tuesday. Now, the numbers one ranked Crimson Tide's top backup to Brian Robinson Jr. was injured in the 42 21 win over Ole Miss. McClellan is second on the team in rushing with 40 carries for 191 yards and a touchdown. With Jace out, former Hueytown Golden Gopher Roy Dell Williams figures to move up the depth chart as the number two running back. Of course, Trey Sanders going to get back in the mix as well, but uh, McClellan's going to be missed. His versatility and catching the uh, ball out of the backfield made him a very important player. Yeah, definitely. Rodell, he, he's a great back, and he finishes all the runs at practice, and it's always a challenge just to thud him up in practice because he's just such a hard runner. He always tries to finish in everything that he does. Well, he's played well when he's had the opportunity to play. Um, he's got, you know, some extensive playing time against, you know, uh, Southern Miss. You know, we're very confident in him. You know, Jace was a very good player, did a great job on – uh, as a runner, as well as a blocker, as well as very good special teams player. So um, we have to replace him in a lot of areas. And linebacker Drew Sanders, the outside linebacker who took over for Chris Allen, number 20, he's not expected to play at uh, A&M tonight after injuring his thumb against Ole Miss. He played with that thumb injury but uh, had some ligament damage, had to have some surgery. He could be out for several weeks, uh, but, uh, boy, he'll be missed. He was playing very, very well. Other guys going to have to step up. Well, very few environments in college football get as loud as Kyle Field, and that will certainly be a factor tonight. Texas A&M announced that the game was a sellout over a month ago. 
And the atmosphere should be on par with what the Crimson Tide experienced down at the Swamp in Gainesville. The Gators rallied in that game due in large part to the energy from the crowd, and Alabama likely will use that experience to prepare for tonight. Offensive lineman Chris Owens says they've been practicing with fewer verbal play calls and more hand signaling after having that sound-related trouble down in Gainesville. We've got to be able to not only deal with the noise, but also be able to finish the game so that way we can eliminate the home crowd out of it because they're a really good team. And we know that them coming off of two straight losses, they're going to be hungry. Their fan base is going to be rocking. It's going to be crazy in there. So we just have to handle the, um, the noise better and get everybody to call. And here are some notes going into tonight's game. It's been 57 quarters since Alabama trailed against an opponent. All the way back to last October 17th, against the Georgia Bulldogs. To put it another way, give you some perspective, Alabama has not faced a deficit in the last 859 minutes of football game time. That's incredible. The Alabama football roster features 16 players from the Lone Star State. We'll get into this topic later on. Head coach Nick Saban and the Tide Success recruiting players out of the Lone Star State Blake Brockermeyer will give us his reasons why. Alabama's scoring offense has been phenomenal as well this year. They are lighting it up. They'll look to continue to do so tonight out at Kyle Field. Well, back in the spring, Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher was confident about the Aggies competing against Alabama this season. He told the Houston Touchdown Club, we're going to beat his blank when he's there. Don't worry. Talking about Nick Saban. So the buildup for this game started long before SEC Media Days even took place, and it only got bigger when Coach Fisher pretty much doubled down in regards to his confidence against the Crimson Tide. However, the buzz surrounding this game, as we said, now has decreased some because A&M lost to Arkansas and at home to Mississippi State this season. His off-season remarks uh, have garnered response from some of the folks at Alabama. We're going to beat his ass when he's there. Tell him. In golf? <laughs> well, I'm sure there will come a day, you know. Me sitting here saying we want to beat him doesn't beat him. We have to develop the skills, the habits, the practice habits, to get the right players in the right place, coach the heck out of them, let them play, and be able to play those games and understand how to play those games. In golf? Is he going to beat me in golf? Uh, you got to love that back and forth. They're good friends, though. And, hey, listen, you can't blame Jimbo. You know, if you're going to win the SEC West, you got to go through Alabama. You got to believe you can do it. But, again, as we said, when you lose a couple games in Arlington to Arkansas and then at home to Mississippi State, and now you got the number one ranked team coming in, it does not look uh, quite as optimistic for A&M as it did just a, a couple of months ago. The game is scheduled for a little after 7 p.m. tonight, and uh, if you can't be at Cal Field, that's okay. It's going to be a beautiful night here in West Alabama, maybe to grill out before the game, have one of those football parties. Let's get our first look at the forecast. CTKO's Jennifer Herbert joins us now live with more on what the weather's going to look like. Jennifer? Hey, Gary. Yeah, it's shaping up to be a beautiful day here in Tuscaloosa. Currently 79 degrees. We're going to continue to warm up as we move through the day. Also going to be very sunny today. Uh, temperatures across the area right now in the 70s. Jasper almost to 80 already. Uh, we're going to hit 86 today. We'll hit 86 again tomorrow. Now tonight, if you're at Kyle Stadium, uh, it's going to be in the 80s by the time the game starts. Upper 70s when it ends, but here in Tuscaloosa, we'll see temperatures a little cooler, mid to upper 70s for tonight uh, into the upper 60s this evening. Gary? All right, Jennifer, we'll check in with you again before the show is over. Coming up on CTKO, we're going to hear what the Aggie players have to say about the matchup against the top-ranked Crimson Tide. Also, our own Matthew Travis will go behind enemy lines and talk to a Houston Chronicle writer who will give us the inside scoop on how the Ags will try to pull off the upset. And later on, the Alabama men's basketball team started practicing this week. We'll talk about the expectations for the upcoming season, as well as some of the injuries that have already mounted and we have not even tipped off yet. Keep it tuned. CTKO will return after this timeout. You're watching Crimson Tide Kickoff on WVUA 23. Four-star tight end Jalil Skinner, the top tight end and number 74 overall player in the class of 2022, announced his commitment to Alabama on Friday afternoon on CBS Sports HQ. 
Skinner, who was celebrating his uh, 18th birthday, chose the Crimson Tide over a group of finalists that included Texas, Florida State, Clemson, and Florida. 6'5", 210 out of IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. He's the 10th best player in the state of Florida, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings. He becomes Alabama's 16th commitment for the 2022 recruiting class. And welcome back to Crimson Tide kickoff inside our Bryant Denny studios here at WVOA 23. I'm Gary Harris. You know, Texas A&M suffered a 26-22 loss at home against unranked Mississippi State last week. And the A&M offense has struggled this season to move the ball, but they've shown glimpses with some occasional big plays. The maroon and white just not consistent on that side of the ball. Junior tight end Jalen Weidemeyer is one of the Aggies' best players and had a breakout performance against Alabama a couple of years ago. And even though the loss of quarterback Haynes King has been a big blow to the Aggies' offense, Weidemeyer is still confident that the A&M offense can get the job done. My freshman year, I never thought I'd be able to even, like years before then, I never even thought I'd play against Alabama. And now it's, it was crazy to score touchdowns on them. It boosted my confidence all the way up. And that's, that's, all, that's all that matters with young players is confidence. All you need is confidence. And once you got all the confidence, then you can make all the right reads and you, could, you can just, just the sky's the limit from there. Yeah, I remember two years ago here at uh... – uh, all right, out of Cowfield, he was very, very good against Alabama. So he'll take that confidence in the game tonight. So AM will be looking to get on track tonight against the top ranked Crimson Tide. Now, coming into this season, Texas AM certainly didn't think they would lose two SEC games prior to the matchup against Alabama. For an inside look at the Aggies, CTKO's Matthew Travis caught up with Brent Zinnerman of the Houston Chronicle in this week's Behind Enemy Lines segment. Matt? Thanks, Gary. This season hasn't exactly gone the way Texas A&M fans hoping it would. And with that, earlier this week, I spoke to Brent Zornemann of the Houston Chronicle to get an inside look at the Aggies. And when I asked him about quarterback Zach Calzada, he told me Calzada has a strong arm but needs to improve on his scrambling ability. Zach Calzada was more of the kind of classic drop back passer, has, a, has just a, a, an exceptional arm, the best arm I've seen in 25 years of covering Texas A&M football. What he's had to learn to do of late behind this offensive line that hasn't given him near enough time most of the time is to start scrambling. You saw that late against Mississippi State. He had a 25-yard scramble for a touchdown where he, he gets into the end zone. So that's one of the things that he's going he's gonna to have to do to give Alabama – defense a little more to think about one thing Alabama struggled with on the road against Florida was the crowd noise and Zorneman told me that the A&M 12th man is going to be a huge factor in today's game A&M is one of those places as Nick Saban pointed out this week that the crowd is very loyal you're going to have over 100,000 there and they also it's not a late arriving crowd they'll be in place and so they're very aware that they're going to need to try and help keep, talking about the crowd here, help keep that Alabama offense in check early and they maybe can keep a game out of it. As I mentioned earlier, the season is off to a rocky start for Texas A&M, but Zorneman told me a win today against Alabama would certainly turn things around. This was supposed to be a magical fourth year under Jimbo Fisher, as I mentioned. Uh, should indeed A&M somehow pull the upset, it would certainly give that indication that things are headed back in the right direction under Jimbo Fisher, which is what kind of A&M fans want to see at this point. Another thing Zorneman told me is that in order for the Aggies to have a shot in this one, Coach Jimbo Fisher is going to have to go beyond his typical guys and switch things up to get some other players involved because if they keep doing what they've been doing, today's game will not be pretty. Reporting for Crimson Tide Kickoff, I'm Matthew Travis. Thank you, man. Always. When we return, Alabama basketball has a supporter uh, that uh, will absolutely make it uh, fan friendly for Bama basketball. So we will uh, have that for you. And if you love Alabama football artwork, later on, CTKO's Grace Brister will do a deep dive into a popular sports artist, Rick Rush, and his current project highlighting last year's undefeated national championship team. Stick around. Alabama basketball is bringing back the Tide tip-off event. It's set for Friday, October 22nd at Foster Auditorium. Fans will get their first live look at the Tide men's and women's basketball teams. Now, this video you're seeing is from 2019 at the Tide tip-off. Basketball, of course, had to skip it last year because of safety concerns from COVID-19. Some of the Tide tip-off highlights that fans can expect. The players will show off their skills, including a slam dunk competition, and men's head coach Nate Oates and women's head coach Christy Curry, of course, will 
talk to the fans about the upcoming seasons. And welcome back to Crimson Tide Kickoff. I'm Gary Harris. Alabama men's basketball has started practicing for the upcoming season. Now expectations are once again high, but the injury numbers are piling up. Last month, five-star transfer guard Namari Burnett suffered a season-ending injury, and forward James Rojas will miss at least the first two minutes two months following off-season surgery. On top of that, Alabama will have to replace four starters, including NBA draft picks Joshua Primo and Herb Jones. Now, there's a lot of talent on the roster, but it's going to look uh, uh, roster-wise a lot different from that championship team last year. Yeah, I think the mindset of the team is in a good spot. I mean, they know we've got a target on our back. They know. They also know we, we've graduated four seniors and then Primo, who was a lottery pick that's playing great, you know, there's five really good players that are not here that were in the rotation last year. Just do not be afraid How about this? or Last discouraged. night, American Christian Academy celebrated homecoming against Wilcox Central, and that's head coach Nate Oates, Alabama men's basketball, with his daughter Lexi, part of the homecoming court. A father and his daughter at homecoming. It just doesn't get any better than that. Very cool. Glad we could get that video last night out there at ACA. Well, Rick Rush is an artist of 45 years, and he comes from a family of University of Alabama supporters and, and graduates. He says that artists do things that are close to them, close to their heart, and Rush proves that through his sports art. CTKO's Grace Brister gives us a better understanding of Rick Rush's unique artistic style. In Everyone loves it when Alabama football is successful on the field, but Rick Rush takes their success to a whole new level. His work tells the inside story of how they won and why they won. Hemingway wrote about the sea and bullfights, and William Faulkner wrote about Mississippi and Ole Miss and all that kind of thing. And so becoming a sports artist is the culmination of two things that I have done all my life. Rush's work is unlike any other because he captures other successes on the field and suspends them for others to remember and reminisce the moments. He uses a technique that he calls sporting impressionism, which he describes as capturing the spirit and precision of that sporting event. Most of them tell the backstory behind the, the, the winning event. The pieces I do help people remember what it was like to be at uh, a Super Bowl or a national championship or NBA world championship or the, the Stanley Cup champ championship and capture that where they can remember and reflect and just reminisce in what that was all about. He has always put a crowd in the background of so many of his pictures. And in that crowd, he always let us be in there. As you'll see some of the prints through the years, you'll see my brothers and sisters and I kind of growing up in the background of those. Rush's current project, Crimson Perfection, is about last year's undefeated national championship team. Many of those stars have left for the NFL, but they are not forgotten because Crimson Perfection allows fans to relive that memory in the same way fans relive the Tides run through of Texas in 2010 and the domination of Ohio State in the 1978 Sugar Bowl. For CTKO, I'm Grace Brister. Thank you so much, Grace. That was some beautiful art. Coming up, Alabama men's golf is getting set to host a home tournament. CTKO's Matthew Travis spoke with Crimson Tide head coach J.C. Well for a look at that and more. And also, we'll go to our Around the SEC segment to catch up on the matchups that you can watch today. Keep it tuned to CTKO. Alabama soccer gave number seven Arkansas a good game on Thursday night in Fayetteville. The Tide trailed 1-0 in the uh, 35th minute until Macy Clem delivers the equalizer. She heads one in on a corner kick. What a shot to make it 1-1, one -one, but Arkansas would come back with two second-half goals to win it 3-1. Alabama back in action tomorrow at home hosting Mississippi State in a soccer match at the Alabama Soccer Stadium. The match is scheduled for 1 p.m. And welcome back into Crimson Tide Kickoff. I'm Gary Harris. Alabama golf has been playing well recently, and of course, so have a lot of their former golfers, notably Justin Thomas, helping the USA win the Ryder Cup. With that, here's CTKO's Matthew Travis as he spoke with Crimson Tide men's golf Kenley coach is JC Well. Thanks, Gary. Beginning tomorrow, Alabama golf hosts all 13 other SEC teams at the Jerry Pate Invitational in Birmingham. And here to discuss that and more, I'm joined by Alabama head golf coach, J.C. Well. Coach, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, Matthew, glad to be here. 
So let's get right into it. As I mentioned, you guys are gearing up to host your lone home tournament this season starting tomorrow where all 13 other SEC teams will be in attendance. And you come into the tournament on a roll after finishing it top five in each of your past two tournaments. How do you guys plan to keep that momentum going? And what are your expectations for this week? Well, first, we're really excited that we're going to have the SEC match play. That Mr. Payton uh, agreed to have that. Looking forward to tomorrow. You know, we play LSU starting tomorrow. So excited about that. Um, we hope to, you know, to build off what we've been doing. Uh, the guys ever since the, you know, I guess after the first round at um, Arizona, which was a little bit poor, they've really responded. And uh, I love how they're practicing. I love how they're coming together. And so, you know, we're going to continue to do what we do every day. Um, we're, we're really working on the little things. Um, I think if you do the little things right, the big things will happen. And, and I'm really proud of this young group, um, kind of a, a, a scrappy group that wants to, to, wants to do well. And um, our practices have gone well. Um, I'm excited. Like I said, we'll see what happens tomorrow. LSU is a great team, and we look forward to competing against them. So at your most recent tournament at Olympia Fields for the Fighting Illini Invitational, J.P. Cave finished as the individual runner-up, and Alabama has had a good amount of individual success overall, mostly from Cave, Cannon Claycomb, and Thomas Ponder. How have those three helped to lift this year's team? Well, they, they, they solidified our lineup. You know, like I said, we, were, we, we didn't know what we were going to be. We're very young. We lost two established players in Wilson Fur and Davis Shore last year, and so now we were – who was going to be a leader. Um, those three guys have done a really good job, especially Thomas. Thomas has been great every single day. Um, and I think, that, you know, when guys start solidifying their, their place and their leadership in the lineup, it relaxes everybody. And I think that, you know, JP made a great big statement last week at Olympia Fields or a couple of weeks ago, excuse me. And, um, and I'm proud of that because we need to continue to grow there. Right now we're still looking for a fourth or five, you know, four or five score there. And so at the back end of our lineup, Cleanup lineup needs to improve also, and uh, but I am very proud of those three because they have really solidified our lineup, which has given us a chance to become a really good team. Now, finally, Justin Thomas has been on a tear recently, helping Team USA win the Ryder Cup in dominant fashion and also finishing fourth in the Tour Championship at East Lake last month. What has it been like for you personally to see his continued success over the years? I'm just truly amazed by Justin. You know, we knew he was a great player and he had an incredible record here and helped us win a national championship in 2013. But you never envision someone becoming, you know, one of the best players in the world. Um, that is an amazing um, uh, tribute to him. Uh, how he, it, but the part I love is how he continues to love being, you know, his time at Alabama. He represents us really well in the Ryder Cup, on the PGA Tour. He's always got that bag that, you know, he's got the swinging elephant on there. And so we're very proud of that, very proud of how he handles himself, how he carries himself um, in the game, uh, how he plays the game. And, you know, almost always in my recruiting, I think he is a – young people look to him. Um, and I think young people like the way he plays the game, how he carries himself. And so it always helps us also moving down the line, you know, in recruiting that, you know, Justin, who is, I think, a young kid favorite, helps us in all phases of what Alabama golf is. Well, Coach, I really appreciate you joining us, and good luck this weekend in the uh, Jerry Pate Invitational. Thank you. Uh, roll Tide. Let's kick those Aggies' tail today. For updates on Alabama golf, stay tuned to WVUA 23 for updates and more. For Crimson Tide Kickoff, I'm Matthew Travis. All right. Thank you, Matthew and Coach. Now, there's a full schedule of SEC games today, a lot of outside of uh, the game at College Station, a lot more going on, too. Here's CTKO's Brianna Gregory with Around the SEC. Alabama is still number one by a wide margin, but not as wide as last week. The Georgia Bulldogs picked up five more first-place votes in the Associated Press top 25 after last week's win over Arkansas. Alabama still has 53 first-place votes, while Georgia now has nine. But then there's this. Earlier this week, Reese Davis, the host of ESPN's College Game Day, says if he had a vote in the AP poll, he would rank Georgia and Alabama tied at number one. This is what Davis said on ESPN's College Football Podcast. What I would like to do on my AP ballot is put Alabama and Georgia side by side, leave about six spots <laughs> blank, and then rest the, uh, rank the rest of them. 
Now you would think with his Alabama background that he would lean in favor of the Crimson Tide. And fans are also not happy with his comment. In an Instagram poll I created on Tuesday where 78% of fans disagree with Davis and with viral memes surfing the internet this past weekend, by now everyone has seen Lane Kiffin viral game day interview about the popcorn comment. And when he was asked what inspired the comment, he said it was not premeditated and since then reached out to the CBS sideline reporter, Jamie Ertle, to apologize. Though he admitted the comment was really stupid and maybe rude, he continued to joke to his offense coordinator on how they forgot to plug in the microwave. Looking ahead, Alabama better be ready to pass in pass coverage next week when the Crimson Tide travel to Starkville to play Mississippi State. In the past five games, Bulldogs will, quarterback Will Rogers has thrown 284 attempted passes. With 59 passes last week against Texas A&M, 62 passes in win over LSU, and 67 passes against Memphis. Whether or not Mississippi State believes it can win, Rodgers and the Bulldogs want to make the Crimson Tide play fast, high octane football. Will Rodgers and the Dogs are far more familiar with that than Alabama is. Alabama may want to pack running shoes along with his football cleats. With Around the SEC and Crimson Tide kickoff, I'm Brianna Gregory. Gary, back to you. Thank you so much, Brianna. Here is today's full SEC schedule, Tennessee's Hendon Hooker has won the Vols quarterback number one job. Head coach Josh Heupel made the announcement this week after Hendon's big game against Missouri. The Vols scored touchdowns on their first six drives and Hendon finished with four total touchdowns and 305 all-purpose yards in a 62-24 win. They'll take on South Carolina. 18th ranked Auburn travels. Uh, our 18th ranked Auburn is at home against number two Georgia Jordan Hare this afternoon. Bulldogs backup quarterback Stetson Bennett is expected to start for the second straight week. Last uh, season, Bennett led Georgia in their 24 first half points in a win over the Tigers. And of course, you see the rest of the games there on your schedule. And it will be capped off tonight with that big matchup out at Kyle Field between Alabama and Texas A&M. Well, coming up, I'll talk with Blake Brockemeyer, father of twin Alabama football players, James and Tommy Brockemeyer. And it's fight night in Las Vegas. We're going to talk about Tuscaloosa's bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder, taking on Tyson Fury for a third time. That's coming up when we return to CTKO. And welcome back into Crimson Tide kickoff here on WVUA 23. I'm Gary Harris. Of course, Alabama and A&M in prime time tonight at Kyle Field on CBS. And there are going to be a lot of Texans making a homecoming for the Crimson Tide. 16 players from the state of Texas listed on the current Alabama roster, including freshman offensive lineman twins James and Tommy Brockemeyer. And their father joins us now, former Texas All-American offensive tackle, first-round draft pick of the Carolina Panthers in 1995, and current 24-7 sports analyst Blake Brockemeyer. He's been on my radio show. We're glad to have you, Blake, on Crimson Tide kickoff today. Good morning. Morning. How's it going? It's going well. I thought you'd be the perfect guy to talk to uh, about how much success Alabama's had recruiting the state of Texas. And we know a lot of – People recruit Texas, Oklahoma, all the in-state schools, and of course from around the country, but very few have had the success that Alabama has had, including recruiting and signing your two sons. In your opinion, what has been the key to recruiting success for Alabama in the Lone Star State? Well, I think, you know, there's a couple of reasons, you know, I can't speak for everyone, but you know, you know, the, some of the programs in Texas haven't done so great lately, so that obviously helps. And then, you know, obviously having Coach Saban and his, you know, track record as, you know, being the greatest coach in the history of college football and his development and program at Alabama, and you can, you know, almost guarantee that you're going to have a chance to win a national championship every year. I think pl plays a huge part in it. When you look at this game tonight with Alabama playing at Kyle Field against Texas A&M, Texas A&M coming into the SEC, and of course we know Texas is on its way as well. How big a help to Alabama's recruiting efforts there in Texas do you think it was when the Aggies came in to the SEC? I mean, I think it helps. I think, you know, like I said, I, don't, I, I think, you know, kids are going to want to go to Alabama regardless of what conference they're in. I mean, obviously the SEC is the premier conference in college football, so that helps. I think, you know, having a chance to play in Texas, 
Uh, also, you know, LSU's not too far away for, for a lot. So I think that helps too. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business decision. You, you got to go wherever you're in the most comfortable. And I think, you know, a lot of Texans just see Alabama as a place where, you know, they can develop and uh, have a chance to win and, 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 and have Coach Saban coach you. For your family, uh, you're Texas through and through. Your dad played there. You were an All-American there. Your son, Luke, is a starting linebacker there. And James and Tommy were recruited nationwide. And like you said, you put a lot of uh, time and effort in the recruiting process of going through it with them and letting them make their decision. But the draw to Texas is strong for your family, very strong. Yet they did choose Alabama. What was the key for them and your family in making that decision? So I think it's, it, you know, like I said earlier, it's everyone's decision on, you know, what's best for them. And, and my kids decided that Alabama gave them the best chance to succeed and, you know, all the things that they were, you know, looking for to get out of their college experience. I mean, the, the, the kids have to get up at 5 a.m. every day and work out. And, I mean, it's, it's a grind. So you don't want to be the one forcing them to go somewhere that they don't want to go to. So, you know, they made up their decision that, that that was best for them, and we support it. I mean, we'd been, you know, obviously happy if they'd gone to Texas as well. So, you know, it was, it was you know, win-win for us either way. It's obviously more of a pain for mom and I to uh, – for their mom and I to, to make it to Tuscaloosa. But, uh, but you know, we're willing to do whatever it takes for them to have, have a chance to, to achieve their dream. Well, today – you and your family get to pull the daily double. Now, we're pre-recording this interview, but it's uh, Saturday morning, and you're at the Cotton Bowl, <laughs> or going to be at the Cotton Bowl watching uh, Texas and OU. And then you get to make the trip to College Station to watch Alabama and Texas A&M. So it's a big day for the Brockermeyer family. Yeah, it's going to be a fun day. I mean, we've kind of been hoping that the schedules would align where we were able to, 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 to make both games. We still have yet to to make a game in Tuscaloosa, which is kind of crazy, but uh, hopefully the Tennessee weekend uh, looks like that's going to be our first first game to come to an actual our first home game. But uh, you know, College Station's not too far away from 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 where we are here in the in the Metroplex. So you know, we'll go to Texas OU, and hopefully Texas will get a win, and then we'll get in a car, head down to uh, College Station, and hopefully go two and two and zero on the day. I, can almost. Uh, but that's the great thing about Alabama is you don't ever have to really hope that you're going to win. You pretty much know you're going to win every game. So I'm pretty confident in that, even though the, the Aggies have a great home field advantage. Yeah, I was going to say, obviously, the, the Texas OU game is huge and, and uh, you know, you're all in with Texas. But I know as much as seeing Texas win, and I'm not talking about as an analyst, I'm talking about as a Texas guy and a parent of two sons on the Alabama football team, will you get as much pleasure out of what, if, the, if Alabama's able to beat the Aggies and Texas is able to win, I guess that's just, is that a draw in terms of your excitement and joy level? <laughs> Yeah, that'd be that'd be a, a really great day for for the Brockermeyers. I think all of us would be happy for that. But uh, you know, I, if I, you know, like I said, I, I'm pretty confident that Alabama will win. I think Texas and Oklahoma will be a a great a great game and a tough battle. So uh, I'm not as sure on that one, but I'm hoping that that Texas can can play a great game, and uh, I'm hoping my son will uh, will you know will represent the family and have a great game himself. Well, we're going to be watching both games here, of course, with great interest, too. And watching Tommy and James, I know they're, uh, they're freshmen this year. They're learning the system. But hopefully in the near future, they're going to be on the field here in Tuscaloosa. Blake, I appreciate your time so much. Thanks so much for having me, and roll tide. All right, and we'll be back with more Crimson Tide kickoff right after this. You know, the weight just came on, you know, just I wanted to look sexy and feel sexy. I taste sexy as well. You know, uh, I'm bench pressing over a little over 350, so whatever his weight come in, I can lay on my back and lift him. So it won't be none of that, you know, brushing me and putting all this weight on me and different things like that. The bronze bomber is ready to go. Tuscaloosa's Deontay Wilder weighed in at 238 pounds yesterday in Las Vegas, the heaviest he's ever been for a fight. He was 231 when he fought Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury uh, the last time. Fury also coming in at 277, four pounds heavier than the last bout with Wilder. Of course, they drew the first fight. 
Fury won the second fight on a TT TKO. Tonight, the third fight, Deontay wants that WBC belt back badly. He'll get a shot tonight at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It's pay-per-view, but I'm telling you something. Deontay is, is, is as focused as I've ever seen him. I think he can knock this guy out. He's going to have to knock him out. He's not going to go to a scorecard and beat Fury. Fury's too skilled, but I think Deontay can knock him out. We'll see on Saturday evening. Well, two Tuscaloosa natives, Alabama's Brian Robinson Jr. and Kentucky's Jacquez Jones, are the Walter Camp National Players of the Week. While their talents are now being recognized across the nation, their journey began as teammates just down the road at Hillcrest High School. Here's CTKO's Tatum Vaught with the story. Like most fans, former Hillcrest Patriots coach Sam Adams was glued to the TV last Saturday watching college football. But the outcome of the game was not his main priority. Two of his former players, Alabama running back Brian Robinson and Kentucky linebacker Jaquez Jones, were having back-to-back -back career games. Yeah, definitely a pretty unique situation. You know, I mean, it would be pretty awesome to have one player ever receive that award much less two and on the same weekend. I'm sure, you know, all the people that are at Hillcrest are taking good pride in it as, as they should. Robinson and Jones both attended Hillcrest at the same time, with Robinson graduating in 2017 and Jones a year later. The pair were obviously stars on the field, but were great representatives of the school even after they graduated. I always have a, our senior class over to my house in the summer and, you know, we do a little dinner. And, uh, Brian, you know, took the time to come back and address those guys. But with, with Jock, it's just when you see the way that he affects everybody in the room in a positive way anytime he comes around, whether that's in the locker room with the players or just coming in the coach's office to say hello. or The, the, the entire room is always happy to see him. Although Robinson and Jones are now being recognized at a national level, their journey started right here at Hillcrest, and they'll always be Patriots at heart. Reporting for CDKO, I'm Tatum Vaught. Jacquez Jones and Brian Robinson Jr., great football players, and they're proving it in the SEC. Well, coming up, WVOA 23's Mike Royer sits down with Crimson Tide Sports Network broadcaster Chris Stewart. They'll talk about this Alabama football season. And later on, the Bryant Museum begins a new era with a new executive director. We've got the details, so stick around. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back into CTKO. I'm Mike Royer, filling out and helping out a little bit on the sports show on this Saturday game day. Chris Stewart, a familiar face and voice, all part of the Alabama broadcast. Chris, it's great to see you. Always good to see you, Mike. You look great. I mean, we won't spend much time on it, but I know you're Thank glad you. to be looking great and I, feeling good. I don't look great, but I look like <laughs> I did before I had all my medical problems. So yeah. in that regard, I guess I do, but I'm very they, appreciative. They told me beforehand to tell you to look great. So Thank I, you. So I, I did appreciate it. It's good you, to see you. You read it just as I wrote it in the, the checks in the mail. If Coach Saban continues to get assistance as head coaches other places, somebody's going to beat him someday, but not quite yet, right? What last Saturday? Thought, <laughs> a lot of people thought it could have been last Saturday. And it easily could have been. Sure. I mean, you, you look back, Lane has come as close as any of the former assistants, other than Kirby Smart, I guess, of doing it. And did it when he was at, well, I say this, he was not a former assistant when he was the coach at Tennessee. Yeah, he had not yeah. yet been on Coach Saban's staff. But right. he, he certainly put up a good fight last year. But uh, Alabama took care of business very early this one. The stop at the end of the first Ole Miss drive, turning it into points on the other end, you kind of look around the booth and you go, nothing is final until it's over, but you kind of felt like it was over yeah. at that point. And I know what Coach Saban would say, and I know you do, because you talk to him all of the time. If you ask him about going forward, he'd say, well, the next coach is a fine coach. He's got a good program. He does a good job. It may happen sometime when we least expect it. Like today at A&M, they ought to beat A&M, but you never know in an SEC game on the road. To me, it makes them even more dangerous that they lost I know. their last matchup because because there's the concern that maybe your guys are going to look past them. And this will be just as big a game for – when I say it will be just as big a game, I'm not even sure that's true. I think there's a little less pressure on them hmm. because they're not expected to win the game. If they win, then maybe people are going into that going, all right, you got a great shot. And I know they still do. 
Anybody that sees them on film knows that they still do. But I don't think the level of expectation is what it might have been otherwise right. if they had the perfect record. They can play a little bit more loose, a little more relaxed, and Alabama's got to work that much harder this week to make sure they're locked in. If they wanted to save their season at Texas A&M, this would be a great way to no start question. it. That atmosphere there, I've only been there once. I know yeah. you've been there multiple times. It's just a different place. Anything can happen anytime. It's a different place, all right. Tell me about how much more fun, and I know you love what you do, I know that, yeah. but how much more fun is it now that the place is packed full and fans are fans again and screaming and yelling? Well, it feels like a game day yeah. again. And and for me, it's really been three years since, I, since I've experienced yeah. that because I missed – I missed all of the 2019 season. I was in the hospital during virtually yeah. the entire season. Yeah. Uh, last year was not the same, and now we get a chance to enjoy it. But the Ole Miss game was really the first time that we had the packed house. It was great down in Gainesville. It, it was terrific yeah. down there. Uh, but that's the only one where you looked up and you go, there really aren't any seats available. And, and that's the way it was against Ole Miss, and that's fun to see. And hopefully that will be the norm rather than the exception going forward. A little unfair to ask and impossible to do. How do you compare this team with some of the great teams you've seen? They've all been good and different in their own ways. Yeah. These guys look pretty strong, don't they? They look strong. They Also, you understand where the deficiencies are. Yeah. And among those would be the fact that they haven't shown they can sustain their best Correct for four me if I'm quarters. Wrong. In two games now, Coach hasn't been real thrilled with how we ended, letting them score late. It's always about how they finish. Yeah, and, and and not thrilled sure. is an understatement. That would that would <laughs> that would be well put on your part for for family uh, television, yes. But I do think it's just a team that's built different. Yeah, you you have so many younger guys. You have guys that are equally potentially as talented is what you've had, but they're not as seasoned, they're not as experienced, they haven't been through these these games, these challenges as the front line guys. A few have, but not all. And at quarterback, that's certainly the, the case. But he has shown thus far, he looks like he is the next in what is becoming a long line of really talented guys at quarterback. Let's use our last minute to shift gears and talk pro football. And by Can that, do. I mean... Every game you watch, oh, that got tackle was made by C.J. Mosley. Uh, Mac Jones let him down the field. Right. So much fun to watch these young people that we've watched play here in the stadium doing so well on Sunday. And I'll, I'll admit, I'm not a huge NFL guy. I'm not either. I haven't been one since I was a kid, <laughs> and Richard Todd was my quarterback, and the I Jets were man. my team. Yeah. Because that was the last time Alabama had multiple starting quarterbacks in the National Football League mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah. And now that you, you're you right, you can't watch a game without finding a former Alabama player there. It makes it enjoyable. It certainly helps recruiting going forward. Uh, it's it's very special time to be an Alabama football fan. Next year and the year after that, we'll see some of these guys playing on Sunday as well. Don't Love, rush it. Don't rush it. We want to keep them here as long <laughs> as we can. Right. Love the work you do. Love hearing you on the air. And uh, always appreciate you taking time to visit with us. Always flattered you to ask. Thanks, Thank Mike. you, Chris. CTKO will continue in a moment. Update some of the exhibits behind me. We have some of the, the exhibits that are original uh, to 1988. Go ahead and replace all of that stuff. You know, use some of the technology that's now available to go from just static exhibits to video or radio. Well, that's the new executive director of the Bryant Museum, Olivia Arnold. She says one of her top priorities in the position will be to update some of the existing displays with video and audio when possible. And the Bryant Museum expects to unveil a new display in time for Alabama football's next home game, October 23rd, against Tennessee. Speaking of Tennessee, all of a sudden they're up 28 to nothing on South Carolina in the first quarter. That game's Maybe getting bigger. Welcome back to CTKO. I'm Gary Harris. Well, earlier in the show, we heard the well-documented off-season comments that A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher said at the Houston Touchdown Club that he and the Aggies would beat Alabama while Nick Saban was the coach. But he says he didn't necessarily mean this season. And after an 0-2 start to SEC play, oddsmakers have pegged the Aggies as an 18-point underdog against Alabama tonight. But A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher doesn't expect the Aggies to be phased and back away from tonight's challenge. 
And our players play them all the time, and, and they see them. So I don't, I don't see that as an issue, and it hasn't been an issue. But you have great respect for them. And, and sometimes anytime you play an opponent who's had tremendous amounts of success, you get to remind them, you know, they've had – why they have a success. They're, they're this, you know, they're human like you are, and they, they work hard, and they, play, and they play well. And you can do the same thing. All right, time for talking uh, just about over. It's not time for us to be over with the weather, though. Jennifer Herbert's back with a final look at the forecast. Yeah, just going to be a really great night for watching football this evening at Kyle Field. 7 p.m. kickoff, 82 degrees, 76 by final game. So a bit warmer out there than it is here in Tuscaloosa. But 75 at 7 for the kickoff, 70 by the final 68 as we move into the overnight hours. Just a great night to get out, watch the game on a patio, and a really great weekend. 86 degrees will be our high today. 86 will be our high tomorrow. Can't complain. No complaints from me, Gary. Absolutely, Jennifer. You're doing a great job. We'll keep you around. You keep bringing us forecasts like that, that is for sure. Once again, uh, Tennessee up 28 to nothing on South Carolina in the first quarter. All right, that is going to do it for Crimson Tide kickoff. A reminder, WVUA 23 News at 10 tonight. Matthew Travis will be at the sports desk with uh, latest on the Alabama A&M game and the Deontay Wilder-Tyson Fury fight. For everybody here at WVUA 23, thanks for watching Crimson Tide kickoff. Enjoy the games.